Hey guys, my name is Pixie from Appy Builder, and this is a beginner guide to conditional statements, otherwise known as the if-else statement. This tutorial is aimed at viewers who have little to no programming experience, but you are familiar with using Appy Builder. Since these are concepts, most of the videos in this series are designed to be used as a reference guide, along with the section on my website and the Appy Builder documentation, which has a lot more detailed information about component properties and individual blocks. Even if you don't know what these blocks do, I'm going to assume that you know where the block comes from, either because of its color or the words on the blocks. If you want to follow along, I would recommend watching a minute or two, then pausing the video and copying what you've learned on the screen. That will allow you to listen to the explanation so you're not just blindly copying what you see on the screen and missing out on important information. That being said, let's get started. A conditional statement allows a program to perform actions under certain conditions. You might often hear this term referred to as a decision structure or branch or an if-then statement or any combination of those words. The pseudocode for a conditional statement typically looks like this. If something happens, then do this. Sometimes we have a special condition and a default condition. If something happens, then do this. Otherwise, do this for everything else. For example, if your favorite color is pink, then do this. Otherwise, if your favorite color is not pink, it can be any other color in the world, then do this. Let's use an example. If you give a mouse a cookie is a really popular children's story. If you don't remember the story from your childhood or you've never heard of it, it basically starts out saying, if you give a mouse a cookie, he'll want a glass of milk. Then when you give him the milk, he wants a straw to drink the milk. And when he's done drinking the milk, he wants you to give him a mirror to make sure he doesn't have a milk mustache. Pretty much every time you give him something, he wants something else. Let's use that example to create a conditional statement, but I'm gonna simplify the story a little bit and just use a food item and a drink item. We'll pretend that if you give a mouse a cookie, then he'll want a glass of milk. If you give the mouse a donut, then he'll want a cup of coffee. If you give the mouse some cereal, then he might want milk, water, or orange juice. And lastly, we'll say if you give him any other food item that isn't a cookie, donut, or cereal, he's going to ask for a napkin, which isn't a drink item, but that's okay. Open up the procedure panel and grab the first procedure block. In this example, we're going to create a procedure called give mouse, which means we will use this procedure to give the mouse what he wants. Click on the mutator and snap in an input. This input is sometimes known as an argument or property, but you can think of it like this procedure's local variable. Change the argument name to food. So when we call this procedure, we'll specify the type of food. This procedure will allow us to give the mouse a cookie. For this example, we can just call this procedure in the screen's initialize event. Open the control panel and notice we have two blocks that represent conditional statements. The first block is the one you'll probably use the most, and the second block is a convenient shorthand when a condition can only be true or false. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first block. In the last video, you learned how to use operators. I'm gonna use the string comparison operator because the value for food is a string. Okay, so we've got our condition, if food equals cookie, then we need to give the mouse a glass of milk. Let's create a local variable named drink. The default value for this variable can be a blank text block because the drink is determined by the type of food. If we give a mouse a cookie, then he'll want a glass of milk. There is a label on my design viewer right now, and I'm gonna use this label to display what the mouse wants. Now remember that drink is a local variable, so it can only be used inside of this procedure, but the variable itself can only be accessed inside of its parent element. We can use a join block to say something simple like the mouse wants drink. Whatever string is stored in the drink variable will be replaced here on the label. So in this case, we could say drink equals milk, and this sentence would totally make sense. But if we wanted to be a little more precise, we could say a glass of milk. Click on the mutator and notice we have two different items. The term else if refers to another specific condition. 
The first condition was specific because in order for the drink to be milk, the food has to be cookie. If we take a look back at the example that we're trying to create, if we give the mouse a donut, he's gonna want a cup of coffee. That would be considered a specific condition, so we would snap in the else if item. So this one should be pretty easy. If food equals donut, then drink should be coffee. Or you can be more specific and write in a cup of coffee. What about the third condition from the example? This time we said if we give a mouse a bowl of cereal, he might want milk, water, or juice. In this case, the condition is specific, but the outcome is random. So which one of these would we use? We would still use the else if item because the condition is specific. In this third condition, food equals cereal. To determine the random drink, we can use a simple number system. Appy Builder has a block that lets you generate a random number. We can create a local variable inside of this condition, call it dice, and then set its value to get a random number from one to three. I like to call these types of variables dice because it's like I'm rolling the dice, but in this case, it's just a three-sided dice. We're going to assign these numbers to the possible drinks. We'll say, if we roll a one, then drink should equal milk. If we roll a two, then drink should equal water. If we roll a three, then drink should equal juice. Now we have what's called a nested if else statement. It's basically a condition within a condition. The last part of the example was if we give the mouse anything other than a cookie, a donut, or a bowl of cereal, he's gonna want a napkin. So how do we represent every possible option in the world in this statement? Are we gonna keep guessing other possible food items? Probably not, because that would be impossible. Instead, we use the else statement. The previous three conditions were very specific. The final condition is not specific. The else statement is used as a default. When the first three conditions fail, the fourth condition will trigger. So we don't need to specify anything. We can just say that drink equals napkin. Now technically, a napkin isn't a drink, but remember, a variable is just a placeholder. In this case, we don't need to create a second variable just because the word napkin doesn't fall into the drinks category. So now that you know what the else portion of the condition does, take a second look at the nested statement. We used three specific conditions to create the nested statement. What if I removed the third else if item and replaced it with else? Would this decision structure still work as intended? Yes, absolutely. The dice variable can only have three possible outcomes, one, two, or three. If we tell this variable to generate a random number from one to three, and it somehow generates T800, then Skynet has obviously taken over the computers and we have bigger problems. So if dice does not equal one and does not equal two, the only number dice could possibly be is three. That would make three the default number, so you could absolutely create a conditional statement like this. Either option would work just fine. All right, time to take all this knowledge and see what happens. Let's set the food value to cookie in the initialize event and live test the app. Notice that the label says the mouse wants a glass of milk. In the blocks editor, change the value of food to donut. You will need to manually refresh the live tester, but you can do that just by changing any value in design mode. I usually just add a random character to the about section on the screen. When the companion refreshes, you should see the label change to say, the mouse wants a cup of coffee. Now take a look back at the conditional statement. Why did the label change? Each time we call this procedure, the condition is evaluated. We start with the first condition. Does food equal cookie? No. So this condition is skipped. Does food equal donut? Yes. So this condition executes. The decision structure would continue to check for true conditions. In this case, the only condition that is true is that food equals donut. So the other three conditions are ignored. 
Now, change the food value to cereal. Manually refresh the companion and you should get a random drink. Leave the value at cereal and refresh the live tester a few times. Just keep refreshing it. By sheer coincidence, the random drink might appear a few times in a row. There are only three options in this condition, so you will likely see the same options multiple times in a row. Now let's try the final condition. This time enter anything that you want into the food value. You can even enter a series of numbers and letters as long as you do not enter cookie, donut, or cereal. When you refresh the companion, you should see that the mouse wants a napkin. Now try one more food value, but this time I want you to enter cookie, but spell it in all capital letters. Do you think the mouse will want milk or will he want a napkin? If you said napkin, you're correct. Remember, these words make sense to a human being. We know what a cookie is, but a computer doesn't. So to a computer, lowercase cookie, uppercase cookie, and different variations of the word cookie, these are three totally different strings. If this condition is running behind the scenes and you're the developer, that's really not a problem. That means that you are in control of the code, so you can spell cookie however you want. But what if we allowed the user to decide what to feed the mouse? Typically, we would use the text box component to get string input from the user, and we can use a button component to allow the user to submit their data. So let's pretend the user entered cookie in all capital letters. How do we tell this condition to treat cookie in all capital letters and cookie in all lowercase letters as the same string? I'm going to move these blocks around so they make a little more sense. Instead of hard coding in cookie, we'll use textbox.text and we'll call this procedure in a button.click event. We want to make sure that the computer knows that as long as the word cookie is spelled correctly, any variation should trigger the first condition. We could make use of the OR operator, like you saw in the previous video. Using the OR operator would look something like this. If food equals lowercase cookie or food equals uppercase cookie. But that would mean that we'd have to change all of these conditions. And what if the user decides to enter some other variation of the word cookie? We can't really account for all of those possibilities. So the easiest option would be to convert the user input into all capital letters or all lowercase letters. In the text panel, you'll find the upcase block. Use the drop-down menu to select either upcase or downcase. We've already written this condition using all lowercase letters, so it makes sense that we should convert the user input to all lowercase letters and compare that string with the lowercase letters on our conditions. Now we have the original version of the user's input, which is still stored in textbox1.text, and we also have a lowercase version of the user input string. When the user has control of the input, you'll usually want to account for every possible accident or exploit that could arise if the user does something that they're not supposed to. Knowing exactly what to do will come with time and practice. Now we're about to wrap up this video, but I want to show you one last thing. Remember earlier in the video, I had mentioned there was a shorthand version of this conditional statement. Now I'm going to put these blocks off to the side so you don't get confused here. All right. And let's just use a basic screen initialize event, a local block and our test label. The shorthand if else statement comes in handy when your condition can only be true or false. For example, if you give a mouse a cookie, then he'll want a glass of milk. Otherwise, if you give him anything other than a cookie, he'll just want a napkin. And if you want to be more precise, you could use a join block on this label to display something like the mouse wants drink. If you ever decide to learn a programming language, you might hear the term ternary operator. Most programming languages have a shorthand version of the if else statement, and it usually looks something like this. This kind of looks weird the first time you see it, but the ternary operator is actually really useful once you understand how to use it. If you feel like you have a better understanding of conditions, go ahead and move on to the next chapter in this video series. Remember, you can always use this video or my website as a reference guide to help you in your programming journey.
That about sums up this tutorial. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. You can view all of my videos directly on YouTube, but if you need a little extra help with this tutorial series, you'll find it here on my website. Click on the tutorials link in the top navigation. Right now, each section just contains the videos that you should watch in order and some notes from the video. If you click on the to do link in the nav bar, you'll also see a list of things that I plan on adding to the website over time. So keep checking my website for updates. Also, remember that Appy Builder has a really detailed documentation containing information about the properties and blocks for every component. This section will eventually have a video on every major component, and it's a great tool if you really want to master Appy Builder. If you need help for school or projects you're currently working on, make sure you check out the Appy Builder community. You'll find more tips and tutorials there written by community members. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and have a great day. Bye.